Welcome back to Momentum 99. Uh, in this video, we will be seeing a problem on how to find the natural frequency of a given system where you will be having a mass M suspended from a point of suspension point O and you will be having a spring. Now, you, will be, you need to find out the natural frequency of this system by using first is Newton's method and the second is energy method. Let's see, learn the diagram, uh, how the diagram is given here. We have a mass M here. The mass M is suspended from the point O as you can see from this diagram at a distance L here. And apart from this mass, we have another uh, element here There is nothing but the spring having a stiffness K. Now in order to see the position of this spring, the spring is uh, uh, fixed at a distance A from the point of suspension of the mass M at the, from the point O. So there are different uh, positions of the uh, elements in this given system are mass is situated from the point O at a distance L and the spring is situated at a distance A from the given point of suspension O. This is clear from the diagram. Now, this is a little bit different problem from what we have seen in the, uh, the previous problems now. Now why it's a different problem because it's, this problem is uh, called as, uh, is uh, related to the simple pendulum problem. Now what do you mean by this simple pendulum? Now we know that any rigid body which can have a angular displacement. See we know that uh, any body which, is, uh, which can move in a straight line we will be calling that motion as a translation motion or a straight line motion to and from motion everything we have seen. But if a body covers a small angular displacement with respect to a fixed point O then that, uh, that body is uh, said to have called as a simple pendulum and also this simple pendulum will be under the action of the weight or it can also be called as the, the gravity of the earth now. Now, whenever a body, rigid body is capable of undergoing a small angular displacement under the influence of uh, this uh, uh, gravity, then those bodies are called as simple pendulum. Now, now this problem is, is nothing but problems are based on or with respect to the simple pendulum. These problems are very important. You can see from the, the question papers of the VT examination. Now, in order to solve this problem based on Newton's method or energy method, first we need to draw something called as free body diagram. Now, what is free body diagram? We have learned this, this in the earlier classes. We will be considering the mass. We will be, uh, we'll be uh, ignoring all the spring forces, the gravity of forces, all the other elements given in the diagram. And considering only the mass, we will be representing all the forces which are acting on this particular mass because of the elements, the spring element here and also the gravity here. Now, how to draw this free body diagram here? Now, in order to draw the free body diagram, just represent this diagram, whatever the, the base they have given, the point of suspension, this is point of suspension O. Now, from this point of suspension, what I do is, from this equilibrium position, that is nothing but the straight line whenever the body is assumed to be under rest, I will be giving a small displacement. From this equilibrium position, I will be tilting it, I will be just applying a force and the body will be tilting. Now since we are considering the displacement to be angular displacement, I will be considering a small angular displacement that is given by theta. Right. Now when the body is in such a position that is nothing but out of equilibrium, we need to consider the forces which are acting on the body now here. Now what are the forces I said? This simple pendulum will be under the action of the force gravity. Right. G. So whenever the mass is given here. Now for example, let us assume that I have applied a force here, I have applied a force. Now because of this, the body tends to move from this equilibrium position, it can move either from this equilibrium position towards the left or towards the right. Okay. Now assume any given position of the mass here, now the forces that will be acting is nothing but, now because of the external applied force, the body tends, the, the mass tends to move from its equilibrium position. So it will be having certain acceleration. Now we know that acceleration is given by m into x double dot. Now what is x double dot? x represents the displacement x dot that is nothing but if you differentiate this x with respect to time that is nothing but displacement by time you will be getting the velocity again if you differentiate this velocity dx dot divided by dt you will be getting the acceleration now instead of writing a as the acceleration in case of solving all these problems you will be writing x double dot as the acceleration here now next since the body or the mass whatever we will be considering the problem is under the action of gravity we know that the acceleration force is given by g now see we will be considering this as m into g the acceleration force which is acting on the the mass here now these are the two forces with respect to the applied force and the acceleration due to gravity. Now also we need to represent the force on this mass because of the spring K here. Now what is K here? K is nothing but the stiffness. Now we know that in case of the longitudinal problems or wherever the body used to have a straight line motion, 
then the spring force is given by k into x that is nothing but the displacement now since our displacement here is, is in terms of theta we need to remember this particular straight formula i'll be telling you people how to remember the spring force now see here spring is located at a distance a from the the point of suspension o here right now the spring force will be there just k into a and we know that spring force is given by k into x that is the, uh, with respect to longitudinal problem now here in case of this oscillation problems the spring force is given by k into a and uh, see here now what is the position of the spring here it's nothing but from the point of suspension it is a and what is the deflection of our body because of the applied force it is theta so this vertical distance when we convert into this uh, oscillation distance or the angular this thing i'll be writing this distance as a into theta see this vertical distance a from this diagram if i want to represent this as an angular displacement from this equilibrium position i'll be writing it as a into there is nothing but multiply this distance given by the angular displacement of the body that is nothing theta now this gives us the distance a into theta right now similarly now if this is our equilibrium position the body has moved to a certain distance here now what is the length of this string now or the length of the mass now this length of the mass is nothing but l now our body from the point of suspension has moved through the distance theta here so converting this linear displacement or the linear length l into this angular displacement is nothing but multiply this length into the angle of deflection theta so this horizontal displacement or this distance from the equilibrium position is given by l into theta now this is how you people should be writing the the free body diagram now now let's move on to start the first newton's method now now newton's method is very simple you will be considering the acceleration forces on the lhs and the restoring forces on the rhs now now since you are considering the body which is undergoing oscillation and not the longitudinal or straight line motion m will be replaced by i here now if you are able to see this i will be attaching a pdf copy along with this video now in general longitudinal vibration problem what will be the equation of motion you have studied if you have a mass and a spring mx double dot plus k into x equals zero x is the displacement x double dot is nothing but the acceleration whereas in case of torsion since the body will be undergoing an angular displacement this mass m will be replaced by i i is nothing but moment of inertia and x is nothing but if your body moves in a straight line you will be taking the distance as x now if our body tilts like this you will be taking the displacement as theta now in case of our torsional since our body deflects in an angular displacement i will be taking this x as theta now since you are considering acceleration here in this case also torsion also i'll be considering the angular acceleration given by theta double dot plus spring force k is common i have seen that i have said already that spring force is given by k into a a is nothing but the distance of the spring from the the given point of suspension here that is nothing but point o and this vertical displacement of the spring is also multiplied by a into theta so this whole spring force you will be writing it as ka into theta into a this is the simplest method remember this thing now let's move on to this uh, this thing now uh, how to solve this according to newton's second law or to newton's method you will be taking the acceleration forces on one side and the restoring forces or the couples which are uh, uh, what do you say which are which try to bring the body again back to this uh, equilibrium position or the forces which are putting resistance to the motion now now when i apply the force here the body undergoes acceleration here m into x double turn now, what i said here since our body is undergoing torsional m will be replaced by i and x will be replaced by theta now since i will be writing this equation as here here i not into theta double dot now what is this zero or not is nothing but the point of suspension of our body from the point here now this point is taken as o i will be writing this as o if this point was represented by p i would have written here p right very simple and theta double dot is nothing but the acceleration so acceleration forces or acceleration will be written on the left hand side and all the forces which try to resist this motion is nothing but now if you apply a force here the body undergoes mass into acceleration here now this acceleration or this uh, form this acceleration force will be uh, will be try uh, this uh, spring force will try to put some resistance on this or the forces which try to um, check this displacement are nothing but the spring force here so this forces will be in direction opposite to the acceleration force so the spring force will be written on the lar rhs part now what i do is the body is under the combined effect of this gravity force as well as this spring force here there are two uh, forces which are resisting the motion of the or the acceleration of the the mass and the spring system mass here 
Now, writing this two resisting forces, that is nothing but one due to acceleration due to gravity and the other due to the spring force. On the RHS part, I will be writing here, as I said earlier, spring force is Ka into T tie. And other part is, now see here, if you note down here, you are representing this spring force by negative. Now, negative indicates that this is the force which is trying to restrict the motion. It is trying to put resistance to your motion of the body. Hence, you will be putting this negative symbol here. It's not anything else. A negative symbol indicates this is the force which is trying to restrict this acceleration force, I0 into theta double down. And also, we have another force here, mg. Now, mg is nothing but acceleration due to gravity acting on the mass m here. Now, if you want to take this... Uh, distance couple what you do will be multiplying the force into distance now the force here acting on the mass is mg and the distance what i do now since i have the we have converted this vertical distance into this uh, angular uh, displacement i'll be multiplying this mg into l theta on the rhs part here now if you if you if you ask me what is this lhs part i naught into theta double dot is nothing but I have said earlier i naught you will be taking one particular uh, uh, point where the mass is being suspended here and so you will be taking i naught into t double down. Now next moving on, you will be seeing here, you will be rearranging this whole equation now. You will be pushing these two terms on the RHS to the LHS part and next we will be what we are doing, we will be taking this theta common from these two terms here. Now taking to the theta common we will be having here k into a square minus mgl theta I, this is equal to 0. Now again what I do, we need the equation in terms of this thing theta double dot plus rearranging this whole equation you will be ending up getting this particular equation so what we will do i will be just taking i naught as the lcm so that you will be getting the equation as theta double dot plus k square minus mgl into theta has the second term divided by naught this is equal to zero now if you compare this equation with respect to theta double dot plus omega n square into theta equals zero now this is nothing but a standard form of equation of motion for a torsional displacement body if you compare this with this what is omega n square now if you compare this see first term is theta n dot theta double dot both are equal they get cancelled out now moving on to the second term you have this part here when we equate this to this second part theta and theta get cancelled so you'll be having omega n square is equal to root of this whole thing now, we also know that this natural frequency omega n and the, the linear frequency fn, we have an equation omega n is equal to 2 pi fn. Now, if you want to find the linear frequency fn is equal to nothing but 1 by 2 pi into omega n. So, it's nothing but when you have the natural frequency to find the linear frequency, you will be writing the equation as fn equals 1 by 2 pi into omega n. Just remember this one, fn equals 1 by 2 pi into omega n write this equation this ends up the newton's method here now moving on to the second energy method you will not be using any free body diagrams here you will be considering the the summation of kinetic energy that is nothing but t and the potential energy this both are it should be when we add this to the energy should be constant here now if you look at the general kinetic energy formula we know that kinetic energy is given by half into m into v square but since it is a angular displacement problem we will be not considering m we will be considering i and V is nothing but we know that velocity and in terms of uh, this uh, linear vibration what we do X will be taking as a displacement so that in case of uh, this angular displacement theta will be the displacement and moving on the velocity is nothing but when you divide this dx by dt that is nothing but velocity in case of vibrations we will not be representing this differential term we will be just representing it as x dot and this x dot in case of this uh, angular displacement problem torsional problem will be representing the, the velocity as theta dot. And now moving on, if you differentiate this d, uh, uh, this uh, velocity again with respect to time here, we will be representing that as d square x by dt square or in vibration we will be directly writing it as x raised to the power of double dot. You will be just representing two dots for the small x here. Now since it is again angular displacement problem or a torsional problem, the acceleration will be represented by theta double dot. So the displacement is theta, velocity is theta dot and the acceleration is theta double dot here. Now moving on. Now writing this equations, keeping this in mind, the kinetic energy formula is given by half into i into theta dot square. That is nothing but theta dot is nothing but v. We will be writing as v square, that's theta dot square. And the potential energy is given by, let's look at here. The potential energy, u is equal to, you have to remember this trite equations here. mgl cos theta plus half into kx square. Now this mgl cos theta you will be using in this case where, let's go back to this, uh, that particular diagram here. 
MgL cos theta you will be using when the, whenever the mass tends to fall towards the point of suspension here. Or let us look at from this diagram. The mass when you remove this spring, what happens now? The acceleration due to gravity will be moving towards the the point of suspension over here. Hence, you will be taking the formula to the uh, the potential energy as mgl cos theta now if your mass will not be having in certain problems the mass tends to move away from the point of suspension that cases you will be seeing in the further uh, videos now now the potential energy is given by mgl cos theta plus half into kx square now we have learned already that the displacement x is nothing but a into theta is nothing but you will be converting the the distance a into angular displacement there is nothing but from linear displacement to angular displacement you will be converting by x is equal to a into theta here now now what do we have the equation here? The potential energy is mgl cos theta plus half into x I will be replacing by a into theta x square is written as a square into theta square. Now adding this to the summation of kinetic energy plus potential energy will be getting this thing and these two summations of the energy should be constant. Now what I do is I will be differentiating this summation of two energies that is nothing but kinetic energy and potential energy here. Now when I differentiate these two energies what I get is now see how will be differentiating this is the equation m I will be writing as it is I am differentiating with respect to time L square also I will be keeping it as it is the only differential term in this equation are nothing but theta right now theta what I do is theta dot square have here so differentiating this is nothing but very simple 2 into theta dot into again I will be differentiating theta dot I will be writing this as theta double dot okay next moving on to the second term mgl cos theta the differential of cos theta we know that it is sine theta again you will be differentiating theta theta whenever you differentiate theta you will be writing it as theta dot here okay and the last term is half into k into a square now you have only theta square 2 into theta into again this theta you have you will be writing it as theta dot okay this is equal to constant all the two terms what i have said that will be cancelled when you simplify this equations okay just try it now Okay, after seeing this video, try this step. If you have any, any doubts, just give me a call. I will be trying to solve your problem here. Now, after solving, that is nothing but cancelling out this 2 and this differential 2s, whatever you will be getting, differentiating this theta with respect to the time, you will be ending up getting this equation. Now, in these three terms, what you are seeing, you all have a theta dot term here. Again, I will be removing that. I will be taking common, pushing to the right, right hand side. I will be equating that equal to 0. You will be left over with this equation, this one. And also I will be taking sine theta for small angles of sine theta. See, what do you mean by this small angle? Since you have this spring connected to the mass, the mass will not be having very high amplitudes of uh, high uh, displacement. It will be undergoing very small amplitudes of small displacement. And you will be taking theta to be small and sine theta, small angles will be equal to theta itself. Now rearranging this whole term, we will be getting this theta double dot plus ka square minus mgl divided by ml square into theta this is equal to 0 again comparing this with the same thing theta double dot plus omega n square into theta equals 0 comparing this with this you will be getting the same natural frequency what we had got using the newton's method now see here newton's method also we had got the same natural frequency a natural frequency is represented by radians per second whereas linear frequency is represented by hertz and also one more pro one more the thing i have i forgot to mention here while solving the problems you should first see whether the mass it tends to move towards the the point of suspension or the point of suspension is above the mass now since the point of suspension is below the mass whenever you remove this string or something which is attaching the mass it tends to move towards the body or the acceleration of the gravity will be moving towards the body so or move sorry moving towards the the point of suspension in such cases you will be taking this mg l mg into l theta as positive when the point of suspension is above the body, you will be taking this as negative here. Now this is the problem with respect to finding the natural frequency of a problem having uh, undergoing a small angular displacement or the torsional method. Whichever method you use, either Newton's method or energy method, the value of natural frequency and the uh, linear frequency you people should be getting, it should be of the same value. Thank you.